welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by Loserport.com. As ever, I am your host, Harry Simeu, and on this bonus bit of content, we'll be answering the question, are the current crop of youngsters ready to step up and have an impact in the first team come next season? I'll be sharing, of course, my thoughts on that in this video. Um, you know, lots of people been talking in the, in recent weeks about Arsenal potentially having a limited resource come the summer. Um, there are those of you out there who say that, you know, that's an absolute load of nonsense. And with the sponsorship deal set to come in and all sorts, that actually Arsenal will be in a pretty strong position. But, you know, and I accept that you may know more than I do, but... Those reports of limited resource, they're just not going away at the moment. They keep surfacing. And so I think this is a question worth answering, worth debating. Um, of course, I'll be sharing my thoughts. They are only my thoughts um, on whether some of these young players that we currently have at the club are ready to step up, are ready to take a place in the first team and help Unai Emery and his staff achieve their goals. Now, don't get me wrong. The idea of building a team through your youth academy, through promoting from within, is a fantastic one. It's a romantic idea. It's the ideal world scenario. But that's not the way modern football works. We're in 2019 and managers don't often get more than two years to build a team before questions start being asked about their position. And so you do wonder whether a manager in Unai Emery's position, a manager who has one more year remaining on his contract before there is the option to terminate it, will think that it's worth the gamble, will think that it's worth waiting for the likes of Willock, Reese Nelson, Emil Smith-Rowe and Ketia to come good. Or will he prefer to go out and bring in the players, even if resources are limited, to go out and bring players that he knows for a fact can perform to a certain level on a consistent basis and help him to achieve his targets. Now, you know, Unai Emery is a fantastic coach. He's a fresh, young um, hungry coach and you know you can see the passion in the way he is on the touchline and you can see that he cares about his players he cares about his team and you'd like to think that development is a very uh, big thing for him but at what cost at what cost do you start uh, selecting these players with the hope that they're going to come good but you know at the same time potentially lower your team's chances of achieving their goals you probably don't because that's the state of modern football, whether you like it or not. That's just the way it is. I'm going to touch on a few of the players that, you know, people say are ready to, to break into the first team picture. Uh, give you my thoughts on whether I think they're ready or not and why um, I think that. So let's start with Reese Nelson. Now, Reese Nelson, of course, has been on loan at Hoffenheim in Germany this summer. I think we can all agree that when the loan deal was announced, we all thought it was a positive one. Um, it was a chance for Reese to get out there, play some football um, on a regular basis, uh, gain some experience and some life experience that comes from moving abroad at such a young age and, and having to work with uh, different players, a different language, basically stepping outside of your comfort zone. Reese started his loan um, like a house on fire. Uh, I think he's got seven goals so far this season, most of them coming in the first half of the season. And he was fantastic at the start, really impressed. Everybody was talking about him. Lots of comparisons between him and Jadon Sancho. Um, rightly or wrongly, in my opinion, wrongly, because I think Jadon Sancho is a lot further down the development line than than uh, Reese Nelson is. So I don't think that comparison is necessarily fair. However, um, you know, two young English players gone abroad to Germany, um, taking the league by the scruff of the neck um, at the start anyway. And then Reese Nelson was unlucky to suffer an injury, an injury that kept him out for quite some time. And since then, he's never really been the same. Uh, there are murmurs in Germany uh, that the the coach at Hoffenheim has not been entirely happy with his attitude and that's why he's sort of been um in and out of the side he's, he's only started I read a stat today 17% of Hoffenheim's games in the Bundesliga this season which is less than one in five so um you know he's not playing much from the start and you know that indicates to me that Hoffenheim probably don't think he's ready to start in the first team week in week out so why would Unai Emery think that he is? That is kind of my point. That's kind of where I'm going with this. I think that Unai Emery, as I've already mentioned, doesn't have time to hope that certain players come good. He doesn't have time to wait around uh, in case 
these players uh, get to the level that's required. Unai Emery needs results and he needs them ASAP. So if I was him, I'd go out and sign a winger, a ready-made winger that I know can perform at the level required. And it's pretty much as simple as that. Now, um, we there was some debate on Twitter yesterday about this, about Reese Nelson in particular. Um, lots of people talking about him perhaps starting in the first team next season. And I made the point that I don't think he's quite ready. Um, speaking with Patrick D'Angelo and, and Kevin Hatchard, a Bundesliga commentator on Twitter, we, we got quite deep into this debate. And I'm just going to read you a tweet out from Kevin, uh, who is a Bundesliga commentator and has far better sorry, knowledge of that league than I do. And when asked his opinion on Reese Nelson's season, he said this, flashes of excellence, but only flashes. Doesn't do enough out of possession. And I suspect that's why he was been left out a lot. Very talented though. So it's clear that Reese Nelson has talent. Everybody that's watched him play says that. But whether he's ready to feature um, in the first team at Hoffenheim, it is up for debate, let alone Arsenal. And I think the standard here in the Premier League is higher. I think Arsenal are a higher standard club than Hoffenheim. And the fans of Arsenal would demand more than the fans of Hoffenheim. So it's probably unfair to rely on Reese Nelson now to come back from this loan spell and be our winger, be our answer to the problem that we've been talking about all season, our lack of width in those areas. So, you know, let's not put too much pressure on Reese Nelson. I think he can be a squad player next season, uh, you know, feature in the cups and et cetera, et cetera. But is he ready to step up to the first team now? I have to say that I haven't seen enough yet. Now, let's talk about Emil Smith-Rowe, another one of this talented crop of players who uh, has impressed whenever he's been given the chance, particularly in pre-season. He looked really good and he's obviously featured a few times in the League Cup as well. Uh, and again, he impressed. Now, for me, when I look at this current crop of youngsters and I've had the pleasure of going and seeing the under-23s a couple of times this season... Um, I've always been impressed with Emil Smith Rowe. He's always been the one that I look at and think, this guy's got the X factor. This guy's got that something special about him. And when I look at them all and I think, who could go on to a very high level? He's the one that stands out to me. He's gone on loan to Germany as well. Um, unfortunately, injuries have really, really limited his playing time. But what do you do with Emil Smith Rowe? Do you bring him back? Or do you send him out there again for another season? I, I certainly wouldn't sell him. I think this guy's got bags and bags and bags of talent. But I'd be inclined to send him out on loan again because, you know, again, we've seen flashes. But is he above the level of some of the players that we've got now? I don't think he is at the moment. I certainly think he could be in the future, though. So he's one I'd keep hold of. I think the loan moves are useful. I like the fact that we're sending players to the German top flight as opposed to sending them down to the lower leagues because for me, the, the Bundesliga is a lot closer style-wise and quality-wise to the Premier League than the Championship, for example. Um, the Championship is a very gruelling league. It's very long, a very tough competition. The games come thick and fast and you do feel that young players could potentially be burnt out um, if they were asked to, to sort of play week in, week out in that division. So Emil Smith-Rowe, in my opinion, I'd send him out on loan for one more season and hope that he can stay fit and get, of course, more game time under his belt. Eddie and Ketia, uh, the next one. A player who, in my opinion, um, hasn't done an awful lot for Arsenal since those two goals he scored against Norwich in the Cup last season. And granted, he hasn't had... Uh, enough playing time and and for that I have sympathy for the youngster but he did get a game against Blackpool away in the cup and I didn't think he did enough now I'm not judging him on one game I think that's unfair but at this level you need to take your opportunities and that was a golden opportunity he had some really good chances to score he didn't take them and I think you've seen off the back of that that Unai Emery is not um, willing to to play him I think you know even Lately, we've been playing with the front two. It's been working really well. And then we went to Wolves and rather than playing with the front two, because Aubameyang was out, I honestly believe that Unai Emery went back to uh, a slightly different system because he didn't trust Eddie Nketiah. And I, I get that. I get why he doesn't. He's not proven enough. Eddie Nketiah, for me, based on what I've seen, and, I, and, and I'll be honest, it's not a great deal. I don't think he'll ever make it at Arsenal. And so me personally, I'd look to move him on in the summer. Ainsley Maitland-Niles, another one who 
uh, we have high hopes for. And Ainsley, to be fair to him, has done very well coming into the side and playing in a position that, let's be real, isn't his position. He's not a right back, but I think he's done pretty well in deputising for Hector Bellerin. My concern with Ainsley Maitland-Niles is that you know, he's being hindered by the fact that we don't have a deep enough squad in certain areas. I can't for the life of me understand why he wasn't asked to play in centre midfield that day against Crystal Palace when Elneny and Genduzi played, because for me, he's better than both of them. Uh, so, you know, I, I think his development has suffered because of the fact that we don't have a deep enough squad. And my fear is that eventually Andy Maitland-Niles will get fed up, that he won't have the patience uh, to, to wait around and get his chance in his preferred position. And he may look to go elsewhere. Um, equally, from the other point of view, he hasn't played enough games in the centre of midfield. So you understand why Emery's reluctance to do that, uh, where the reluctance, sorry, comes from. But at the same time, you know, Emery obviously believes in this lad, believes he's ready to play in the first team, would rather play him at right back than an experienced right back like Stefan Licksteiner. So that says a lot about where he sits in Unai Emery's thoughts. But this guy needs to be playing in his position in order for him to develop. He's not going to develop uh, too much more in that position at the moment at right back because it's simply not what he does. Last but not least, I want to talk about Kostandinos Mavropanos, a young Greek centre-back um, who came into the team at Old Trafford last season, uh, impressed, then got sent off uh, a couple of weeks later, I think it was, against Leicester. Um, and then since then, has had all sorts of injury problems, missed most of this season, came back into the side at Watford uh, just a couple of weeks ago now. For me, this guy is very raw. Um do I look at him and think this is a future Arsenal mainstay? Um, no, I don't. I'll be honest. But again, I haven't seen enough of him. And and I guess, you know, the point I'm coming to at the end of all this is it's impossible to know just how good these players are if they don't get game time. But at the same time, as a manager desperate for results, you would be reluctant to take the risk. I would anyway. And I think that's where Unai Emery's mind is at as well. You'd be reluctant to take the risk and put your hopes in these players and your faith in these players because at the end of the day, it's not because they've shown bad signs. It's just because you haven't seen enough. Do I think that this current crop of Arsenal youngsters are ready to step into the first team? No, I don't. That's that's my honest opinion. Um, I'm happy to take you know your points on that and debate it in the comments, of course. So, Leave a comment, like, subscribe, you know what you got to do. But for me, these guys are not ready to be relied upon. We haven't seen enough for them to be relied upon. And if you look at the other top sides, they don't really rely on youngsters. You get the odd case here and there where a player breaks through and does well. But it just isn't the way of modern football anymore, particularly at the big club. So, you know, I would, if I was Unai Emery, look to strengthen in the transfer market and I would look at the players that are currently in and around the first team. And I know some of them have been poor this season. But equally, those that I'm talking about in this video haven't shown enough to suggest that they could do a better job on a consistent basis. Uh, so that's some of my thoughts on, on the youngsters, the current crop at the moment. Are they ready to step up? Probably not. Of course, I can't be certain. But would I take the risk is probably the follow on question from that. And I wouldn't if I was the manager. That's my honest feelings. Uh, let me know what you guys think, of course, in the comments below. And uh, we'll be back on Monday morning with another podcast uh, following on from the Leicester game. Hopefully the result is a positive one. Until then, take care.